Good morning and welcome to the House of the Lord as we've gathered to worship Him in this place. Thank you for joining the British Columbia Division of the Salvation Army in the Canada Bermuda Territory and the College for Officer Training as we've gathered here in this place, which today is holy ground. We've gathered here to bless the Lord, to praise Him, to give thanks to Him, for He is good and His love endures forever. I'm going to invite you to stand as you listen to the word of the Lord. This morning we're going to begin our service by hearing the word from Psalm 145, verses 1 to 2, in some of the languages of the province of British Columbia. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. 我要遵从你，我要永永远远尊重你的名，我要天天尊重你，也要永永远远赞美你的名。Dim Sadim Lade the one inim de well saba nidim it the one. Te exaltare mi Dios, mire, y bendeciré tu nombre eternamente y para siempre. Cada día te bendeciré, y alabaré tu nombre eternamente y para siempre. Je te exaltare, oh mon Dieu, mon roi, je te bénirai jusque dans l'éternité. Tous les jours, je te bénirai et je te louerai jusque dans l'éternité. Amen. Some of the young people of the British Columbia Division and some of the languages of our province declaring that we want to exalt his name forever and ever. And so we're going to invite you to do that as the band leads us. We're going to exalt his name. We're going to stand up. We're going to bless the Lord and praise his name in these days. <laughs>
Let's pray together. Father God, we just recognized what a privileged people we are. God, we're so privileged to be together in this place, in this beautiful country, together as a united body of believers. I just thank you for the beauty of community and friendship and for the encouragement we find as we come together. I praise you for those who are present, who have promised to follow your call in their lives, our new lieutenants. God, those candidates who are here, my own session mates, the messengers of the kingdom, and God, those people who have first felt that call in their lives this very weekend. God, I thank you and I celebrate the way that you work in our lives as your followers, as your people. I pray that in the midst of this weekend, among all the celebration and the joy, I pray that in that, you move amongst the lives of all of us here and those who are not present in this building but are watching from a distance. I pray that you stir our hearts and God, you embolden us and that as we move out back to our home communities and we return to the challenges and the joys that are there waiting for us, God, that we are a unified people unified by you, God, only you, and that we are a transforming influence on this broken world. God, I pray that each and every person here is truly a messenger of your good news, the good news that this world needs, and that the impact of your presence today is felt so far beyond the four walls of this room, God, that it's felt days and weeks and months and years to come that this is a moment that we all walk away changed by your movement and your presence with us. Amen. Please be seated. Many of the core across the province of British Columbia are meeting in their core buildings and watching versus via live stream and worshiping with us. And so as we're gathered as the British Columbia Division, I want to take a moment to say thank you to the 12 officers who are farewelling out of our division this week. Can't imagine what we're going to do without you. Uh, and so I want to thank you. Uh, Captains BJ and Krista Loader out of Powell River. Captains Peter and Ruth Hickman out of Victoria High Point. Majors Saul and Jessica Drea from New Westminster. Uh, Majors Juan and Lorraine Burry from South Vancouver Richmond Health Services. Captains Mark and Jody Dunstan from Cat. Major Majors and Miriam Leslie out of Penticton. We do really uh, thank you for your ministry here in this division and uh, wish you well and God's blessing as you go to one of those other divisions in the territory. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> We're so grateful for all you've done and all that you are. We also want to honor the three uh, officers who are retiring this week from our division, Majors Martin Ketteringham and uh, Carolyn Doonan and Dale Lewis. And uh, we thank them and pray for them as they enter uh, retirement this week. We got some, thank you. This uh, summer all across the territory is that transition of officers coming and going from appointments. We all have, also have some officers moving, but staying in our division, we're grateful for them and pray God's blessing on officers and corps and ministry units as that transition takes place. As a division and as a territory, we want to recognize our territorial leaders and uh, say welcome and thank you for all the support and the way that you serve us as a territory. So to our territorial commander, Commissioner Susan McMillan, and to our chief secretary, Colonel Edward Hill, and to our territorial women's ministry secretary, Colonel Shelley Hill, we want to thank you. Please stand and receive our thanks and our welcome. It is wonderful to be here with you, and we've enjoyed our Congress so far, haven't we? 
And God has still wonderful things for us this morning, and we trust him for all that he's going to do. We just sang, Stand Up and Bless the Lord, and what a great old hymn that is, isn't it? And doesn't it sound great with the Canadian Staff Band? It really did. <laughs> Marvelous. That's my band, you know. <laughs> But what a challenge to each one of us to stand up and be counted as followers of Jesus. As we gather for worship in this holiness meeting today, may we gain the resolve that we need to be able to do just that. We live in a society that is moving towards rejection of religion and disdain towards those who believe in anything at all. Well, they can't look down on us if we stand tall and proclaim the wonderful story of Jesus. God is our strength and song, we sang, and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransom powers. Stand tall for Jesus. We've been so blessed by the presence of our international leaders during this weekend, and we praise God for their ministry. Thank you, General Bryan and Commissioner Rosalie for being here with us. And please know that Canadian Salvationists pray for you and your ministry as you go about the world. We are able to follow you around the world through social media and all of that that comes up on our devices. And we just marvel at how diverse and large our Salvation Army is. And we feel like uh, you're allowing us to see that as we travel around with you and go around the world with you. We have Major David Williamson to uh, thank for a lot of that social media stuff that goes up, I think, because he's always with his little telephone uh, taking photos and uploading and doing things. But would you greet the General's uh, personal assistant, Major David Williamson? Thank you. <laughs> Now, did you know that both the General and Commissioner Rosalie are graduates of the Salvation Army's Executive Leaders Program from Simon Fraser University right here in beautiful British Columbia? Well, not here. We're at UBC. <laughs> so don't tell them that. But right here in beautiful British Columbia, Commissioner Rosalie also studied at uh, the Booth University College and has a BA in Biblical and Theological Studies. Outside of their ministry, these international leaders enjoy cycling and hiking. I'm not sure if we gave them enough free time this weekend to do any of that here in beautiful Vancouver. Family is important to the General and Commissioner Rosalie. They love their two daughters, their sons-in-law, and their five grandchildren. Of course, their family spread across the world now. But thankfully, there is FaceTime, right, and Skype and all of those things, so they're able to stay connected. Well, General and Commissioner, we have looked forward to this Congress for a whole year now, <laughs> and it seems impossible that we're now in the very last public event of the weekend. But still, we want more from you, <laughs> and I'm sure we will be blessed by your ministry today. And we pray that God will indeed uh, grant that blessing upon your ministry. Will you welcome the General and Commissioner Rosalie Petter. Good morning to you. It's, it's great uh, to hear those introductions. I love the way they talk about us before we stand up. All you need to know is this. We love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. We are children of the King. We are Salvation Army officers and very proud to stand in our uniforms around the world and say that we have given our lives to Jesus and we will serve him through the Salvation Army. We are proud to be Canadians. <laughs> wow, that's very weak. 
And so we will um, now, in just a few hours, say goodbye to Canada again and uh, leave home and do what the Lord has called us to do, but do it with a deep joy. So we will leave from the airport in a few hours. London is calling. As long as I have my last Tim Hortons before I board the plane, I will salute you all and head back to London. We are excited about what God has done this weekend. God has been here. We have seen him move by his Holy Spirit. We look forward to today. We're not, it's not over yet. We have things that God has to do yet this morning and we're trusting him. We have been praying and we believe and we are claiming victory for his people here today. We will all leave from this place. Now we have got to go out there and make it a better place. Because as we meet with Jesus and as Jesus fills us with his Holy Spirit, he expects us to leave here and do his mission and his work where we find ourselves later on today and tomorrow. And that will be in our homes, in our communities, in our workplaces, in our colleges, in our universities, in our schools. God bless the Salvation Army in Canada. God bless the British Columbia Division. And God continue to do a mighty work in and through your people so that men and women and young people will be transformed by his spirit, will know that there's deep joy in following Jesus, and will know that life can be full and will know transformation and experience for themselves. So God help us all. We have a work to do. God has called us. God is calling you. And let God use us as we leave this place today. Thank you for your great welcome. It's good to be here. Um, we have some lifelong friends sitting here in this front row. And it's just good to be able to intersect with your life again and to see you all. Thank you for all of you who say that you are praying for us or will pray for us. The greatest gift that anybody can give to the general, the general and the commissioner is the fact that you're praying for us. Because we cannot do this, folks, off our own. But we can do it through the power and strength of a God who has proven to us that he can take the impossible and make it possible. 43 years I will celebrate as a Salvation Army officer. And let me tell you, when I began my warfare and my journey, many thought I'd run away. But they've all been mistaken, because here I am today, all these years after. And I know that the days ahead are going to be just as exciting as they have been and were when I became a Salvation Army officer. And I trust him for that. So thank you. And continue to pray for us and continue to follow us and continue to do what God has called you to do. God bless you. Now, our scripture reading this morning is taken from the books of Acts. Acts chapter 2, Acts 2, beginning to read at verse 14. Hear the word of the Lord, and may it speak to our hearts this day. Acts 2, beginning to read at verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen to carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. 
The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Good morning, friends. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Oh, I think I heard one very proud cadet, two very, very proud parents, and some dear pastors from the Comox Valley, but I think we need to try that one more time. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure this morning to, while the ushers are coming forward, to announce that this morning's offering is going to be used to share the love of Jesus Christ, to meet human needs, and to be a transforming influence in the lives of the children who will be coming to Camp Sunrise and Camp Mountain View this summer. Let's pause for prayer. Our Father in heaven, and right here in this your sanctuary, we gather this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to worship you. This morning, Father God, we return a very small portion of the many blessings that you have given to each of us. We ask, O Holy One, for your insight, that we would be good stewards of the many blessings that you have provided for each of us. May this offering be used, be blessed, be touched by your hand, multiplied by your glory, and used to touch the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of these little ones that will be gathering for camp this summer. Bless these gifts and bless the offering and the givers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's watch a video together.
This time we're going to have a really exciting opportunity for a group of people from British Columbia to be enrolled as senior and junior soldiers by the General of the Salvation Army. I'm going to invite them to join us on the platform at this time. In British Columbia we have 56 ministry units, two camps, 83 active officers, 2,200 employees, 
and I don't know how many senior junior soldiers because the count's going to change today as uh, these folks are going to join us with their Corps officers and uh, be enrolled by the General of the Salvation Army and introduced by their Corps officers as they gather here on the platform. So while they are coming, let me tell you, they're from the Richmond Corps. Uh, they're from uh, Boundless, Vancouver, 614 Vancouver, Harvest Community Church, New Westminster, Kelowna, South Mount, and Alberni Valley. Give them a warm welcome, please. You need to know that we need more senior soldiers and junior soldiers around the world. You need to know we have 1.2 million plus. Nothing wrong with 1.5, 2 million is good. And uh, anybody interested in being a soldier of the Salvation Army, it's an honorable thing, it's a God-honoring thing, and I hope that you would consider it as your call to serve in this world for your God. And that's what these people are doing this morning. It's absolutely exciting. You'll see a singular junior soldier here in the middle. We're going to get to her in a few minutes. She's one of the bravest and the best. And uh, that's for you, Heather. We're almost ready. Now, I would, as a Corps officer, make them all give their testimony. They can't do that this morning. That's impossible. So in some ways, I'm going to help you with your testimony. I'm going to tell this congregation and whoever's watching on the Internet what this means to us here this morning. The Salvation Army rejoices in the truth that all who are in Christ are baptized into one body by the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, you're recognizing, witnessing today that you want to become soldiers of the army so that you can testify that you worship the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen to that. That you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen to that. And that you want to fulfill your obligations to your Lord here on earth by serving as a soldier in the Salvation Army. That's worth a round of applause, folks. All soldiers, listen carefully. This is what we agree to. We affirm our belief in the Bible is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and we accept the Salvation Army's articles of faith. And I want to summarize these this morning. You're declaring here today in front of this audience that you want to be responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in your lives. You're also saying here today that you want to make the values of the kingdom of God the standard for your lives and that you want to maintain Christian ideals in all your relationships. You want to uphold the sanctity of marriage and what that means to us and you want to protect the value of family life. You're saying to this congregation this morning that you're prepared to be good stewards of all that you have and all that you are. You're saying that you'll abstain from anything that enslaves the body, the mind, the soul. You're saying here this morning that you'll be active in God's work, both in sharing the gospel, serving the needy, and contributing financial to the work, financially to the support of the Salvation Army. You're saying that you're going to be true to the principles of the Salvation Army, and as the general, I expect you to follow through. Amen? Bless you. They witness today that they freely enter into this covenant convinced of the love of Christ and that that love requires the devotion of their lives in the service through the Salvation Army. They declare here this morning that by their determination and with God's help, they'll be true soldiers of the Salvation Army. God bless you. I'm going to invite them to listen now and they're going to respond to me, raise their right hand and say, I do. So this is for you personally. I apologize. I can't put each of your names in there individually. Thank you. 
do you declare in the presence of God and this congregation that you undertake by the help of the Holy Spirit to live and work as true soldiers of Jesus Christ and the Salvation Army according to the witness and the promises you make here today? If so, I invite you to raise your right hand and say, I do. Bless you all. Thank you very much. In the name of the Lord, whom we love, whom we serve, I accept your declarations today and receive you as soldiers of the British Columbia Division for the honor and glory of God. God bless the Salvation Army. God bless these new soldiers this morning. Would you like to welcome the newest soldiers in the Salvation Army? We're going to come back to this lot in just a minute. I need to focus on a young lady here for a few moments, if you don't mind. This is uh, Heather. As I said, one of the bravest. If you're willing to stand here. So she's going to do her junior soldier's promise. You need to listen very carefully. Nice loud voice, okay. I know that Jesus is my Savior from sin. I know that Jesus is my Savior from sin. I have asked him to forgive my sins. And I will trust him to keep me good. And I will trust him to keep me good. By his help. By his help. I will be his loving and obedient child. I will be his loving and obedient child. And I will help others to follow him. And I will help others to follow him. I promise to pray. I promise to pray. To read my Bible. To read my Bible. And to lead a life that's clean in thought. Word and, deed. Word and deed. I will not use anything, I will not use anything. That, may that may injure my body or my mind, including harmful drugs, including harmful drugs alcohol, and alcohol and tobacco. Done. <laughs> well done. I am very... <laughs> Okay. I am very happy to you, enroll you as a junior soldier of the Alberni Valley Ministries Corps, and there's a man behind you that will help keep you on the straight and narrow, and I am declaring you to be the bravest junior soldier in all of British Columbia. And I want to give you this Bible this morning. And I have something here that nobody else in Canada has. And in fact, I don't think anybody can find one. It's a badge that comes all the way from Fiji, from the New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa territory. And it's about the general's call to mission. No one has that badge. Four officers are going to come forward and present certificates, and we're just going to take a moment to do that. You just thank the Lord in your heart for what's happening here right now. Heather was with her father and Corps officer, yes. uh, Captain Michael Ramsey and, and Captain Susan Ramsey. We're going to start with New Westminster Citadel with Majors Saul and Jessica Doria. We have here Julie Nelson and John Singh. God bless you, Julie. God bless you. John, God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. We present Na Liu. This is going to take a while. <laughs> Jennifer Huang. Jane Huang, Lili Chen, 
Jili Ge, Jenny Ho, Novena Ng, Xiao Zhen Ma, Elizabeth Yim, Jimmy Wang, Kun Li, Shermaine Tan, Jeffrey Chen, Rebecca Mi, Timothy Ping Chen, Elsa Kin Wai Li, and Elsa Yan. We had the Vancouver 614 Corps led by Lieutenants Jenny and Carlos Marin, then the Richmond Corps led by Majors Ed and Kathy Chu. Now we're going to travel to Kelowna and Captain Daryl Burry. I'd like to present Ginger Goma. And we're going to tra travel to Boundless in Vancouver and Jonathan and Carl Evans. General, this is Shelley Tomlinson. And Christina Lee. From South Mount Citadel New Life Ministries, led by Auxiliary Captain Parker Shee. General, I uh, present uh, Mr. Chin Tong Lu, Du, Du Chin Tong. Li Ying Zi. Du Chin Xing. Wu Ling Ling. Amy Yang. Gao Zhiqiang. Zheng Guangfu Jackson. Hong Li Ling. Li Ya, Hong Li Ya. Chen Jing Chi. Candy, uh, Zhang Chui Bin. Tom Su Xu Tong Rui. Po Zhen Zhen Ying Shen. Jennifer Zhao Yu Zhen. May Lai Lai Fu Lian. Lai Gui Mei. Now we have two more from our newest Corps in British Columbia with its newly approved, officially approved by headquarters name, uh, Harvest Community Church in South Burnaby, uh, Lieutenants Peter and Lorianne Mitchell. 
General, I'd like to uh, welcome Man and Marwa Debak. Is that incredible? God is blessing the Salvation Army. Oh. Wow. On your feet, we need to say a prayer together. Friends, all of you here in this moment, we want to dedicate this particular commitment you have made today. Dedicate your lives to the Lord. And for the glory of God, I'm going to pray. And we're going to include you in that prayer, and God is going to bless your lives and bless your service. And we thank God for each of you here this morning. And where's my little Heather? Is she back there somewhere? Heather, come out in front so everybody can see you. Here we go. Let's pray together. Father, you have honored us by your presence here this morning. You have blessed these people because you've spoken into their hearts. You've called them to service and to a life that's meant to be lived for your honor and glory. Bless the youngest Heather and the oldest in this column of new soldiers this morning, and let your love surround them, let your love support them, and may for your honor and glory they serve you well as soldiers in the Salvation Army. God bless the British Columbia Division. God bless the Salvation Army, and God bless these newest soldiers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was really near. Oh, this is not on yet. Not on yet. Oh, really? Good morning, church. Good morning. I got to tell you, I was very nervous this morning until I heard Heather talk. God bless you, Heather, wherever she is. If she can do that, I can do this. Friends, I have good news today. If you're able, would you stand and help us proclaim it in song this morning? Here we go. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb. The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow Before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Here we go He's coming on the clouds Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Here we go. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, 
Open up your gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion. here this day, Father, we came hoping to be a blessing to you and anticipating a great blessing. And we know you haven't disappointed, so we pray we haven't either, Father. And yet there's more to come. We are in the ready position. Bring it on, Father. 
Pour it out upon us. Let us be your instruments, not only today, but as we prepare to leave. Bless us, Lord. Use us in your mighty and holy name. Amen. Any commissioning weekend, we want to honor the newest inductees into the Fellowship of the Silver Star. The Fellowship of the Silver Star was originally called the Order of the Silver Star, and it was devised and inaugurated in 1930 by General Evangeline Booth when she was National Commander of the United States, the Salvation Army in the United States. The purpose of the Order was to recognize, honor, and link in fellowship mothers whose sons or daughters were commissioned as officers in the Salvation Army. In 1936, the order became international, and today it has members throughout the Salvation Army world. In 2001, the name was changed to the Fellowship from the Order, the Fellowship of the Sim Silver Star, and membership was opened also to fathers or other persons nominated by the officer who had fulfilled a parental role in his or her developing years. The fellowship and its symbol, the Silver Star, is a constant expression of the Salvation Army's gratitude to the parents for the unique contribution that they have made to shaping the life of their officer child for service to God and people, for the support they continue to offer, and for the sacrifice, sacrifices made by those parents as their sons or daughters make themselves available for service anywhere in the world. In a private function following this meeting, we will be awarding the Silver Star pins to the parents of our new lieutenants. At this time, though, we just want to recognize them by asking their officer children to present them with a rose if they're here in the building. If not, we will still call their names and recognize them as being inducted into the Fellowship of the Silver Star. Lieutenant Ann Banker has nominated her mother, Helga Banker, and a mentor, Captain Ernst Benz. Lieutenant Joshua Kane has nominated his parents, Kendra and Michael Kane. Lieutenant Angela Kerr has nominated her mother, Mrs. Roberta Mary Ellen Ziegler, and her grandmother, Mrs. Betty Donovan. Lieutenant Derek Kerr has nominated two people who have been mentors to him, Mr. Dan Miller and Mrs. Shirley Malloy. Lieutenant Matthew Reed has nominated his parents, Mr. Jason and Mrs. Phyllis Reed. Lieutenant Whitney Reed has nominated her parents, Llewellyn Shepherd and Marlene Shepherd. Lieutenant Nancy Studeman has nominated her parents, Bev and John Studeman. Lieutenant Joel Torrens has nominated his parents, of course, John and Sherry Torrens. Lieutenant Isabel, uh, sorry. <laughs> Boy, that's been a while. <laughs> Lieutenant Lynn Torrens has nominated her parents, Majors Mark and Isabel Wagner. <laughs> Lieutenant Lynette Trochier has nominated her parents, Noel and Sylvia Guerin. Lieutenant Matthew Trottier has nominated his father, Mr. Lou Trottier, and a mentor, Reverend Gordon Wright. Lieutenant Cassie Van Every has nominated her parents, Jeff and Lynn Van Every. Lieutenant Drew Young is honoring the memory of his mother, Mrs. Allison Young, and honoring his grandparents today, Al and Eileen 
King. May God bless these newest members of the Fellowship of the Silver Star. nominating those people who have um, supported us in our, our journey to be here and as new officers. Um, we're going to sing to you a song called I Want to Say Yes. And I think so often in our spiritual walks, that's where we start. I want to say yes. And God provides people and supports for us that help us to continue to say yes every day without fail whatever that yes might look like, that God himself strengthens us, strengthens us to say yes. Thank you, lieutenants. Beautiful. I want to say yes. I hope you do as well. Just a couple of things before we share the word together. People ask quite often, how do you do it? How do you lead an international Salvation Army in 131 countries? Uh, it can't be a secret because it's live stream, but the reality is I don't do that. I have scattered around this world, 59 legally bonded territorial command leaders who lead the Salvation Army in every place from Korea to New Zealand to Switzerland, back to Canada and Bermuda. I thank God for such men and women, and Commissioner Susan McMillan is one of those leaders. She's supported by a cabinet who are here this morning and by divisional leaders who represent the Salvation Army across this great land all the way down to Bermuda, and I'd like for them, cabinet, to stand, please, and I'd like for you to acknowledge them this morning. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, the other thing I need to say is thank you for having us for this particular weekend. It's been our joy uh, to be here, to be home, to be on Canadian soil, to not have to go through the aliens line at the airport. <laughs> Foreigner, be quarantined, I've had it all. It is time to go home. We will travel home tonight because I've run out of white shirts. <laughs> but God has blessed us over these last few weeks as we've shared in Indonesia, as we've traveled to this place that we now know internationally as Palu, where 4,300 people were swallowed up by the earth. And where when we were there, 17,000 salvations came together for healing for thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness. I have never been so humbled in my whole life. Never. And God has been with us. So we thank him for his faithfulness and a joy now to share with you for a few moments. In my preparation for this last meeting that we're sharing together publicly, I was looking at the proposed outline for the morning meeting and I couldn't help but be captivated by the worship songs that we sang a few moments ago. Can I just take a minute to remind you of the words? It says, he's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord God Almighty? Did you catch that when you were singing it? Wow, this is the God we serve. And then we went on to sing, I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord, who once was slain to reconcile man to God. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. I will gladly bow my knee and worship you alone. Knowing that you were going to sing that before I spoke this morning gives me the opportunity to say, Friends, at the very center of our gathering here today, our lives is the simple witness that we demonstrate through our obedience that Jesus is the Lamb of God and He will come again. Amen. And the thing that's most important in this meeting is that we all know how we fit into that reality. God help us clear in our own hearts today, and I affirm with personal conviction that the mission and message of the Salvation Army is to win souls for Christ. For every person watching this morning or listening here, that you understand that sin is an issue, that coming to God is an opportunity, that the hope of glory is a promise. Jesus redeems us, Jesus restores us, Jesus lifts us up and sustains us, and He will reconcile us to the Father when He returns. Are you going to be there with me? I sure hope so. Look, I, I know on Good Friday, earthly authority messed around with the authority of God. I know that. It was foolishness on their part, messing around with the authority of God, killing Christ, having no context that that was not an issue for him. He would rise again. Everything we believe, everything we, we place our feet upon is in the context that he rose again, defeated death, defeated grave, defeated the sin that is in the world. We are not here to face death. We are here to go through death to eternal life. We need to remember that as we look around in our world today. The secular confronts us. The secular will look down upon our faith. It will condemn us. It will sell us short as far as our hope is concerned. The wicked scheme of the evil one will say to you, it's not going to matter, it's just going to fall off the edge of everything when it's all over. And I say, not so. God has a plan. The sovereign Lord has a plan. 
He hasn't created all of this. He hasn't stirred the hearts of men to repentance. He hasn't called people to service for no reason. God is here today to remind us of his love, to remind us that in the world there is a spiritual momentum, a wind of the Holy Spirit, and when God's people open their hearts to that, anything can happen according to his will and by his purpose. God, help us to be obedient. It begins as we affirm that Calvary is a reality. The empty tomb shouts in the face of the evil one. And you can ignore and you can dismiss. You can be a skeptic. You can challenge it. You can marginalize it. But doesn't change one bit the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish. Therefore, you are invited to Jesus today. But not just you, the people who live next door. They laugh at me at IHQ, you see. Well, it's only because I let them. <laughs> I know my pizza delivery guy by name. I mean, important things. <laughs> and when I call up Hussein, who happens to be a Muslim, I want to know how his daughter's doing. I want to know how life is going. I call up sometimes, he says, there's no pizza tonight. No pizza. He knows it's me. <laughs> who do you know on the fringes of your world who need to know that you belong to the Lord Jesus and that you have the ability and you have the desire to introduce them to something that they don't know anything about, which is the love of God? You have to find a way to be relevant in the world in which we live. People will need to bow and call him Christ. Someday the call will come. Will you be ready? Will you have acted as you should in this life? Will God honor you with your place in eternity? Look, I'm sure you're expecting me as the general of the Salvation Army to be prayerfully listening to the voice of God, and I've done that through this whole idea of a call to mission placed upon the International Salvation Army. I, I believe in my heart today that God needs a mobilized, spirit-filled, love-baptized army. I'm convinced I go and I say it wherever I am. I say it to you, and I say it because I believe that God is uniquely concerned about the lost in this world. The Salvation Army is uniquely positioned in 131 countries to stand up join John the Baptist and say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I won't compromise that. I won't marginalize that. That's who I am, and that's what God has asked me to do. So we've said to you on this weekend, you need to be ready for that. You need to be people of prayer. You need to be holy people. You need to be battle ready. We've said to you, you need to be engaged. I particularly count, challenge the new lieutenants. Engage to serve engaged in worship, exercising faith with a confidence in the gospel that has not been equaled up until this point. If you're looking in the rear view mirror, you need to understand that the windscreen is much bigger and more panoramic. You need to be looking at what God wants to do in our future. I challenge you today to do that, so I pray to you this morning, let me let me in my time lead a robust, invigorated army that's guided by kingdom values and is looking for kingdom outcomes. Let me lead an army that's driven to its knees in prayer, who stands up holy before the Lord and who says we are in the ready position today to serve, to do what you want us to do. Let me lead that army. Let you be that people and God will honor the Salvation Army in the Canada and Bermuda Territories. God help us. So the last lines I give to you today is the reality that apart from being ready and being engaged, you need to take responsibility. I can't come and stand in your place. I can't do that, so I, I ask you to be careful and understand that God is calling us to raise and nurture the next generations. Take responsibility for our children, for our young, young people, for the young emerging leaders amongst us, for these new 
lieutenants, for the cadets, for the messengers of grace that are coming into the college next year. Were you here last night and here first for me, 27 new cadets for the next session, 27. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to get into an argument with anybody who thinks the best is over. Pick a number, come and see me. <laughs> the best is not over. God is laying down his markers and he is saying, Holy Spirit, move in the midst of the Salvation Army in these days. I see it around the world. Why not see it here, right here in British Columbia? where we look to our children and our youth and we say they're the most important gift that God has given us. They're one of the responsibilities that he's laid upon us and we need an army that's growing. If you think we are going to be okay because we're living longer, I got news for you. Heather stood here this morning. I don't really know why she was the only one. But I want to ask every Corps officer here and all the Corps folk here, have you enrolled junior soldiers lately? <laughs> What's happening with your youth work? See, living longer simply means that's more time for you to serve. Don't let the devil cradle you in his little comforting arms, saying to yourself, we are okay. Doesn't work. God call us to a real sense of nurturing and raising up generations to come, giving them a place, going for them and giving them our time. It's a call to compassion, friends. Compassion that costs something. I pray, God, give us a generous people. Not just generous in our giving, but in our time. Generosity that costs us something, not just from our pocketbook, but from our hearts and from our lives. Costly compassion flowing out in such a way that we are finding encounters with people and we are giving of our testimony. Nobody can stop you. There's no political correctness when it comes to telling your story. Sorry. Don't hide behind the reality that you can't speak for Jesus. There's a personal cost. But you must be his witnesses here on earth, just as Acts suggests to us. Taking responsibility is not easy. It's not an easy path. I literally know that personally. And that's why I hide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's why I claim Isaiah 40 and 10 as my verse. I am not afraid. I, am, I have God with me. I am not dismayed. He is my God. He says, he says to me, to you, I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you to be who you need to be. And the final little words, if you like, in this particular part of the call of taking responsibility is a call to inclusion. I, I regret the fact the world has robbed us of the significance of this word. A word that seemingly only has one particular dimension to its meaning, and that is not so. I've traveled the world enough now to see and understand that being on the same page ethically, morally, on cultural issues is near to impossible. Denominations, nations, countries, societies struggle with some of the moral and ethical dilemmas that are around us. And despite the challenge, I will not give to the Salvation Army the luxury of being ignorant or unaware or unwilling to dialogue and understand our place in the midst of these difficult uh, realities. God has given us a biblical imperative to embrace with grace people who live and have their being around us. His command to us is that we be a welcoming people, a grace-filled people. His command is that we refrain from judgment. His command is that we open our hearts in the way that he has. I want to be personally above reproach. I want the Salvation Army to be above reproach. I want us to choose no discrimination, but I want us to do that in a way in which we understand what's important and what we will not negotiate. Again, if you want to take a number and argue that with me, that's okay too. I'm here till four o'clock. <laughs> Friends, in the back of my mind this morning, there's a little phrase that's coming out of 1 Samuel 2 and 30. It says this, God honors those who honor him. 
if you want uh, a, a simple framework for what comes next, that's it. You honor God, God will honor you. Corps officers, your pulpits, God will honor you if you will honor him. Where we serve the community and our family services and our stores and our addictions programs, here's your mandate. You honor God, God will honor you. The simple reality is, is that God is with us. We can know his blessing. You don't have to do this alone. God is with us. Second is that our mission is clear. Don't mess that up. Don't get silly about that. There's no need. The mission is clear. We share Jesus Christ, his love, his repentance, his redemptive work, and his hope of glory. You can add on what you need to, but you don't take that out. That's not your liberty to do so. We also say our salvations are committed to the daily front line of populating heaven. Yes. And that means we will give ourselves from our testimony to our time to our talents to the resources we have in our pocket. And we will say, Lord, it's all yours. I surrender it to you today. Canada and Bermuda Territory has responded to the general's call in this way. Every disciple should have a faith marked by responsibility, a life that recognizes that we are each responsible to God for what he has entrusted to us. This has implications for our stewardship, our decision-making, our relationships, and ultimately our response to God's call. Were you here Friday night? We started this Congress with the Founders' Song. I stopped for a moment, considered the implications. All boundless salvation, deep ocean of love. All fullness of mercy, Christ brought from above. Here we go. The whole world redeeming, so rich and so free, now flowing for all men, come. Roll over me. Now flowing for all men, come roll over me. My family, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, my neighbor, my friend, my acquaintance. Come roll over me. Yesterday at the candidate's reception, I asked a question and I suggest that for officers and soldiers and adherents and anybody gathered here this morning, the question is relevant for you as well. What, what does it mean for you to live faithfully in the time that God is giving you here on this earth? What does it mean? And what do you need to do this morning to make sure that you're giving the right response to that question? What does it mean for you to live faithfully in your time. If you answered that today, God would find his right place in every life in this auditorium. Take responsibility. If you honor God, he will honor you. We're going to sing. The invitation is now given for you to come. And we're going to sing. We're going to sing a song we're all familiar with. All to Jesus I surrender. Words that never grow old. As the chorus says, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Oh, goodness me. If I could come and stand beside every one of you this morning. I would link my arm with yours and I would say to you, how are you living faithfully? How are you doing it? Is everything okay? And if it isn't, maybe this invitation this morning has been designed exactly for you. Come and kneel. Make a commitment of your life today. Lieutenants, Maybe you need to covenant and continue to pray with your families. That's absolutely fine, and we encourage that. Corps officers, 
got your people here this morning. Pray for them. Look towards them. Invite them. All of us together, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. But most important, learning together what it means to live faithfully in our time and to take responsibility for that today. I should have to move back here now because you should come so fast that it would scare me. Because God is here. God is here. Come to Him as we sing the verses together, please. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. Let's share it together. You come as we share this time together. All. Don't hesitate. Seek the Lord. Serve Him faithfully in your time. Up there, folks. Don't, don't be discouraged that it looks like it's crowded here. These lovely divisional commanders will appreciate the third row even more. And we'll move them back. We'll make some space. The important thing is that you come, that you will say to Jesus this morning, salvation is new, salvation is for long years. Make me Savior, holy thine. That's the Salvation Army of today, a Salvation Army that belongs wholly to God. And He will take us and use us for His kingdom's sake. Would you come, please, as we sing, All to Jesus, I Surrender. All. I take just a moment to say a word to the younger folk in our congregation this morning. 
I think all that's important for you as it is for others here is that the second line of this next verse makes sense. Lord, with all of my gifts and my talents and all of my futures and my ambitions, I create a space where I, I give myself to you and I honor you with my life. It doesn't mean that other things won't come to you. It just means that you let God give back to you in a way which is pleasing and honoring to Him. I want to say to young people here today, give God your life. Let Him place His crowning blessing upon it. And perhaps over this weekend, God has spoken to you particularly about your service. Maybe it's not in the training college, but your service is still important. God needs you. God needs you. The Salvation Army needs you. I invite you particularly as we sing this verse, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Have the courage to put yourself on the altar of God this morning and come to Him. Let Him guide your life. You will not be disappointed, I assure you. You will not be disappointed. Sing with me. You come as we share it together, please. Amen. Oh. No, there's another verse, but can I change to a beautiful refrain that says, Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Oh, if God had the liberty to take our lives this morning, to shape them, to be the potter, what would he change in you? Look at your spouse. Ask, what would get changed in you? God help us to be at his beck and call when it comes to who we are. And if he wants to reshape you today, if he wants to change you, salvationist, someone who doesn't know the Lord even, maybe the witness of the cadets and the new lieutenants, what is it God wants to do in you? I invite you to come. God will bless you as we sing, Change My Heart, O oh God. important part. have a moment just to say a prayer 
I want to include you in this prayer if I can and with the permission of your heart. You can be included in this prayer. You don't need to move from where you are. Just make this resolve here today and God will leave this place permanently placed in your heart as you permit Him to have the Lordship of your life. Would you pray with me in this moment, please? Father, thank You for Your movement here this morning. Thank You for the freedom the Spirit has had to move from heart to heart. Lord, there have been those who've come this morning brought their burdens to You, and we thank You for those. There are others, Lord, sitting in seats here this morning who are rehearsing in their minds, rehearsing in their hearts, prayers to you. Lord, hear those prayers. Answer those prayers. Let them know that their covenant with you can be sealed here today. Oh, God, bless your people. Bless the Salvation Army. And let us rise up today a mighty force for good, for the mission of God in the world that we might serve you faithfully. Lord, we make this prayer in the strong name of Jesus for his honor and for his glory. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to sing again, Change My Heart, O God. And it's still not too late. If coming is important to you today, you must come as we sing and as we share together. God will bless the moments that we have here this morning. Singing with me, please. In the heart. In a moment, I'm going to ask that you would uh, pray the prayer with me in the song that says, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, uh, simply asking that God's Spirit would fall again upon us. But I want to tell you, um, before we sing that, uh, that I've learned two things this weekend. Uh, one is that God's bigger than I thought he was, and British Columbia is bigger than I thought it was. Um, <laughs> God has reminded me that he can do, uh, as Scripture says, immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And just when I think I know how much that is, uh, God reveals that he can do immeasurably even more than we can ask or imagine. And I'm grateful for who God is and all that he's done, and it's going to be more than we could ask or imagine. I'm also grateful uh, in this province that we've had the peoples of the Niska and Gitsan nation with us, that we've had translation and Mandarin language going on during our service, that you've seen our two camps, Camp Sunrise and Camp Mountain View, where we're praying that this summer uh, miracles would happen. And I want to tell you that uh, I met two more. I, I got two new friends this weekend. Um, I, I can always use new friends, so uh, I... <laughs> Oof. I got uh, two new friends. Their names are Sharif and Mirna. And um, uh, they're adorable. Uh, they're originally from Aleppo in Syria, a city of millions of people that was destroyed by war. Uh, they got to Antioch, Turkey. They now live in Burnaby, British Columbia, and their parents were enrolled as senior soldiers in the Salvation Army. I had, I had this little view of Myrna singing, uh, Jesus, author of salvation, shine your light and let the whole world see. And uh, I thought, 
It's powerful stuff. Uh, little Myrna from Aleppo singing, Jesus, author of salvation, let your whole light shine that the whole world might see. And uh, God's moving in the whole world. And uh, we live in beautiful British Columbia, and God is moving in the whole world. And uh, it would be good for us to ask him to fall afresh upon us again. The Bible says uh, in Ephesians, keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we want that that would continue to happen. And as this uh, time comes to conclusion, uh, I would invite you to join me uh, in praying that prayer, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. God, we uh, would make that prayer from the desire of our hearts, that sincerely as we look to today, tomorrow, for uh, the rest of our lives and for all eternity, uh, God, we thank you that as you hear us, you answer our prayer. Even in this moment, you answer the prayer that the spirit of the almighty living God would fall afresh upon us. God, I thank you for those who listened uh, in the Mandarin language. I thank you for our friends from the Niska and Gitsan lang uh, nations. God, I thank you for Sharif and Mirna and their uh, parents. God, I thank you for each person that's come here today to, uh, to, to call out to you that in a fresh way that you would uh, fill our lives with who you are and with your goodness. We pray, God, for those who have knelt here uh, in this place, that as they uh, continue on, that you would uh, continue to strengthen them and guide them and bless them and encourage them, that they would know that this moment will continue on in their lives. We pray for those who have come alongside them, that they'll continue to come alongside them in support and prayer. God, we thank you for the messengers of compassion, new lieutenants who are actually going to go to their appointments uh, soon. And uh, God, we pray that you'll open the doors for ministry, that you'll strengthen them and empower them, give them uh, all that they need as you equip them, God. We pray for them and their families as they go out into uh, the world across this country. God, we pray for um, the work of the Salvation Army in British Columbia. God, we're so grateful for uh, all that you do in our lives. And sometimes I hear people say, the Salvation Army saved my life. And uh, we realize, God, it was you. And uh, we want to give you all the grace, all the glory and honor and praise this day. Because you saved the lives of people. So, uh, God, help us to be faithful. Uh, Disciples once said, uh, increase our faith, Lord, and so we uh, ask that you would increase our faith and help us to be faithful. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Join me in that prayer again, Spirit of the living God.
thank God for that spirit. And we know that it's here with us. It's been all weekend. And what a great weekend we've had. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this weekend and all that you're still doing. And we want to recognize that as well. You can be seated. <clears throat> You'll notice that this Canadian staff band has vacated the premises. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that, but there is a plane to catch and work tomorrow morning for those wonderful people who have given us their time all weekend. Um, we have to let them get home so that they can go to work in the morning. Uh, but we're grateful for what they've done this weekend. They've added something marvelous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> in addition to saying goodbye to our uh, new lieutenants as they go to take up appointments, the training college staff is saying goodbye to their cadets who are going out to take up summer appointments. Uh, first of all, though, I want to say that publicly and online, as we are, that we are very much indebted to our officers in the Prairie Division. Where's Major Sean? There he is, and Major Brenda. We are very much uh, indebted to you and to all those officers that are particularly within the Winnipeg area and close to Winnipeg, because they provide most of the practical training to our cadets during their two years at the College for Officer Training. So thank you to them for all of their support. When you get an appointment to Winnipeg, you know you're pretty much on training staff. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but we also want to acknowledge that during the summer, our second year cadets are appointed across the territory to take up responsibilities and to learn from the officers and ministry units that receive them. And again, thank you to all of you who will be receiving these cadets for your tremendous support over the summer and your participation in their training. And now we're going to give them their summer assignments. <clears throat> Cadet Alicia Barrow. <laughs> Cadet Barrow is out of the Pathway Community Church and Grand Falls Windsor Park Street Citadel in the Newfoundland and Labrador Division and she's going to spend the summer at Kingston Citadel and Rideau Heights in Kingston, Ontario Central East Division. God bless you. <laughs> Cadet Catherine Dewick. Cadet Duick is out of Heritage Park Temple in the Prairie Division, and she's going to spend the summer at the Wyerton Community Church in the Ontario Great Lakes Division. God bless you. <laughs> Cadet Danielle Feltham. Cadet Feltham is out of the Winterberry Heights Church in Ontario Great Lakes Division. And she's going to spend her summer assignment at the Glenmore Temple in Calgary in the Alberta Northern Territories Division. <laughs> Have a wonderful summer. Cadet <laughs> Stephen Frank. <laughs> Cadet Frank comes to us from Toronto Harbor Light Ministries in the Ontario Central East Division. And he, yes, and he's appointed to Brandon in the Prairie Division. And he'll be doing field based training there. God bless you, Cadet. <laughs> Cadets Brandon and April Keeping. <laughs> Cadets Keeping come out of the Brantford Community Church in the Ontario Great Lakes Division, and they're going to spend their summer together with their children, I suppose, Finley, Harrison, and Theo. There they are. And they're going to be in the Caribou Hill Temple in <laughs> Burnaby, British Columbia. <laughs> Sounds like they're glad to have you. God bless you. <clears throat> 
All right. <laughs> Cadets Bill and Renee Mailman. <laughs> Cadets Mailman come from the Berkshire Citadel Community Church in the Alberta and Northern Territories Division, and they're going to spend their summer at Scotian Glen Camp and at the Westville Corps in Nova Scotia in the Maritime Division, along with Benjamin and Lydia. God bless them. Renee, Bill, God bless you. Have a great summer. Cadets Kyron and Emily Newbury. Now I want to hear a cheer for this. You're out of Scarborough Citadel in the Ontario Central East Division. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> and you're going to spend the summer in Moose Jaw and Saskatoon in the Prairie Division. God bless you. Have a wonderful summer. <laughs> Cadets Bob and Susan Roffel. <laughs> Cadets Roffel come out of Belleville Citadel in the Ontario Central East Division. And uh, together with Nathaniel, their son, they're going to spend the summer in Botwood in, in, the, in the Newfoundland and Labrador <laughs> Division. I had trouble getting that out. God bless you. Have a great summer. And cadets Andrew and Olivia Sweet. <laughs> yes, they're from British Columbia. <laughs> Out of the Willows Corps in British Columbia Division, and they're going to spend the sim summer at the Southlands Community Church which is in Winnipeg in the Prairie Division. God bless you. Have a great summer. Oh, thank you. Well, congratulations to the messengers of the kingdom. Go ahead and take a seat. And to the messengers of compassion. What a beautiful weekend it's been. And just before we wind up with a, uh, with a song and a benediction, I do want to express my appreciation to our host who have been Wonderful this weekend, Lieutenant Colonel Jamie Braun and Ann Braun, thank you so much for your hosting us. It was a beautiful time. I also want to acknowledge uh, the good work of uh, Major Allison Cowling and Majors Andrew and Darlene Morgan, who have been serving as kind of the architects for the weekend, and we appreciate their good service. I want to acknowledge that Allison is finishing up 41 years of active service this week and retiring. God bless you, Allison. Thank you so much for your good work. We've mentioned the uh, Canadian Staff Band and John Lamb. I also want to just mention the THQ Musical and Gospel Arts Department, MAGA, because they provided a lot of great technical support for us. Thank you very much, MAGA, wherever you are. To our own uh, Territorial Commander, Commissioner, Commissioner Susan McMillan, she, uh, she's commissioned 10 sessions over her tenure as a Territorial Commander, and uh, we're sad that she's moving on to a new appointment on October 1st. We thank you for your leadership and for your support and your kindness and for the tremendous uh, influence that you've had on the Canada and Bermuda Territory. God bless you, Commissioner McMillan. And to our international leaders, General Bryan and Commissioner Rosalie Petal, thank you for your leadership, for your vision, for your passion, and for your confidence that uh, is infectious for us as we try to win the world for Jesus and for reminding us that the best years of the Army are ahead. You know, none of us were called to be part of a shrinking, uh, uh, consolidating the Salvation Army. 
No, we're part of a Salvation Army that's meant to grow and to prosper, to double its impact. And that leads to, a, to an army that's thriving and that's making a difference for winning the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. So please be assured of our thoughts and prayers for you as you continue to lead this great Salvation Army. Let's show our appreciation to our international leaders. At the end of a fabulous weekend, it seems fitting that we conclude with a song that beautifully expresses the joy, confidence, mission, and hope that we share as salvation as Christians. It's a song from the early days of the Army, but it's got a message and a testimonial spirit that's just as relevant on June 23rd, 2019, as it was in those early days of the Salvation Army, because it declares, for Jesus is my Savior, he's washed my sins away, died for me on Calvary's mountain. I'm happy in his wondrous love, singing all the day. I'm living, yes, I'm living in the fountain. Is that your testimony today? It needs to be in every worshiping congregation in the Canada and Bermuda territory. We'll stand the pianist will give us a beautiful introduction and we'll sing right through all the verses. <laughs> all the verses of marching on in the light of God.
now a benediction from the Salvation Army songbook. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the Father's boundless love with the Holy Spirit's favor rest upon us from above so that we may remain in union with each other and the Lord and possess in sweet communion joys which earth cannot afford. Lord, that's our prayer for one another, for ourselves, and for this great Salvation Army that we serve. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you.